Good morning, guys. What's going on Let's today? Go. You're on? What an intro. <laughs> <laughs> today, Victor and I are with Captain Tyler, who's hooked up right there, and Craig with Always and Forever Charters. And we are out of Inglewood, which is on the west coast of Florida. And right now, we are 70 miles offshore and only in 170 feet of water. And we are dropping vertical jigs right now for AJ. Oh, and you're on! Oh, on. <laughs> what an epic intro! Tyler hooked up during your intro and you hooked up. You guys know this video is gonna be good if she hooks up during her intro. Come on. Tyler's Almaco Jack. There he is. Great eating right there. We eat them all the time. They're good. They get much bigger on the wrecks than they do when they're on the weed lines offshore. Exactly. They do. They get up 20, 30 pounds sometimes. All right, good work. Now the crazy thing about this is we're literally 70 miles offshore and only in 170 feet. If we did this back home, we'd literally be in the Bahamas. <laughs> and to get to like 170 feet, you're out a mile off on the East Coast. So it's absolutely crazy. I've never offshore fished on the West Coast before. And we have an awesome day of fishing planned. So stay tuned because we're going to have an awesome day. Oh, double that! Oh, Smaller one. Oh, bro. What happened? Did you just get eaten? Oh, yeah. oh man. Work is getting owned. Oh. <gasps> no! Did you get broke off? Yeah. You broke off everything? Yeah. Come on! Come on, oh! Daddy! Oh! You're not getting me in the wreck this time! <laughs> this one's not as big. Yeah. <gasps> oh, Why? That's gotta be sharks. Yep. That's gotta be a shark. That was high up. Oh, as soon as it hit bottom. Man, that thing was hungry, bro. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. You better get him up. Jeez, what's going Why? on? Why? <laughs> if you're an expensive date. Oh, baby. That's a good one. Man, look! What Why? What am I doing wrong? Go, 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 go! Yeah! That's a good one. Uh-oh. Oh, Tyler. Uh-oh. I think you get shark. What do you have to say? I'm ready to try again, but hopefully I don't get eaten by a shark again. <laughs> Here we go. Round five. <laughs> oh my gosh, get him, bro, get him. No, 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 no. Show him who's boss. <laughs> you might have hooked that giant one that the sharks can't eat. You know, my money's on you. I think you're going to get this one. I'm getting this one. <laughs> Man, that one was putting up quite a bit of a fight at the very beginning. I think 
when you first hook them, they want to get as close to that wreck as possible, but Brooke yanked them up off the bottom. Sometimes you just have to lose five to finally get one. <laughs> there he is. Let's see color. Good. Hey, dude. Damn, that thing pulled. Yeah, he pulled hard, huh? Yeah, he pulled good. He's green, too. Yeah. And they whooped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! They have to be 28 or 30? They're gonna be 34 here. 34 to the fork? Yeah. So that one's probably gonna come up. Oh, that one's probably 34. No. no I don't no. think so. It's probably 28. Really? Yeah. There we go. Got one to the bow, baby. Look at that. First one to the boat. Well, I lost the first few fish, and now the boys are also losing them, so now I don't feel so bad. But. We have this thing full of jigs and we are going through them like water. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're gonna die. <laughs> you are gonna die up there. It looks like you're whacking the head. <laughs> <laughs> These guys taste really good. This is different than the last jack I caught. That was a greater amber jack. This is an Amaco jack. But these guys have really white meat and they taste really good. So we're gonna save this guy and eat him for dinner. There he is. There's your Amaco. <laughs> he's oh, growing. Oh. He's growing. Yeah, he's growing into a shark. Hit oh, God. Well, that definitely was probably an Omaco. It was definitely small. And it got you by shark. <laughs> Lost everything. It's a good thing I like you because you are not a cheap date today, that's for Come sure. On. You've lost a lot too. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's a real one. Jeez. There's no way a shark ate it that fast. No. That was the wreck. That was the wreck. Yeah. Lost everything? Yep. Jeez, that was fast. Oh. oh. Come on, I want a real one. Right. What's up with all these small ones? Come on. No. Give me one. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. I don't know what that was. Oh, there's a cuda, 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 cuda. Cuda just chased them all the way up. Oh, goodness. I already have a few in the cooler, so I'm gonna let this one go. Adios. Don't get eaten down there. Uh -oh. Did you see that? Yeah, I've seen it. I was gonna it. back down and I got eaten. <laughs> oh, man. This guy fought really weird, and I think it was because that barracuda was chasing him up the whole time. But he didn't get hit at all. He looks fine. He made it past the kudas, and I'm gonna let him go. There we go. A monster? Yeah. Go, oh, go, yeah. Go. Get out of there! I like these rods. Oh, nice, right? Yeah. Oh, I think you just got eaten. Yeah. <clears throat> Woo! <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the fillet table. As you see, we are back home. We ended up catching a ton of fish that I have to split this video into two. So make sure you stay tuned for that second video. 
we have a cooler full of fish here. I'm gonna start flying some up, but we got some really nice red grouper in there, which is gonna be in a second video. But right now I'm going to fillet up this nice Almaco Jack. So I have my Dexter eight inch narrow fillet knife, which is my go-to knife for any kind of small fish. So I'm gonna start by making a cut by his head. Now Victor and I had a ton of fun fishing with Captain Tyler. And if you guys are ever looking for a charter on the West Coast, make sure you check him out. I will have all of his information linked down in the description. He put us on a ton of fish all day long and he was a really great guy. So definitely check him out. So I just made that first initial cut and now I'm just following my blade down his backbone, making sure I get all the meat. Now, there's lots of different ways to fillet fish, and a lot of people have different ways to fillet fish, but this is how I like to do most of my fish, and it seems to work pretty good. I always just go nice and slow because I don't want to miss meat. As long as you take your time, you can fillet almost any fish. Now I'm gliding my knife down these rib bones until I get to the other side of the belly. And now I'm just going to cut all the way down so I get to the tail, just like that, and then here we go. Ta-da! Now like we were saying on the boat, these guys have beautiful meat. Look at that. A lot of people think like, oh, jacks, that's probably not something good to eat, but these guys have nice meat. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. First cut the head, come down, spin them around, do your first initial cut. You know, with the tip of your knife, you're not trying to cut all the way down in there, because if you go too far, you might end up leaving meat. Again, some people do it differently. This is the way I like doing it. Another thing about Amoco Jacks is their meat is very firm. It's nothing like a yellowtail snapper, not even like a mahi. They got nice firm meat, so it kind of opens up more possibilities for recipes for you when you have a fish that has firm meat. And I want to do that. Just cut all the way down, then out from the tail. Here we go. This is always the fun part, revealing how you did on your filet. There we go. Nice and easy, just like that. And there's our two beautiful filets. They are going to be absolutely delicious. Now I'm gonna skin them up for you guys. Now I always like to keep my filet table clean, but I never rinse the filets off while I'm filleting. I keep the table nice and clean, get all the blood and guts or whatever's on the table, but I never rinse off the filets. You never wanna put fresh water on your filets while you're filleting them especially if you're gonna freeze the fish. Never rinse your fish off before. And then before you cook it, that's when you can rinse it off if you want to. Start by the tail and just work my way down. Now, these guys have a pretty decent bloodline close to the skin. So you don't have to get as close to the skin as you can because then you're gonna have a lot of red left on the meat. I'll show you what I mean. And they're really easy fish to skin because their skin's so tough. But, see if you get very close to the skin, you end up, I mean I got the whole thing, you can see I didn't leave anything, but then you end up leaving this stuff behind and you get this bright red if you go too close. Throw this in, you'll see there's tons of catfish down there today. Now they do have pin bones, so I always feel how far up the pin bones go. You know, just kind of feel around, you can feel them, they're right there. That's a pin bone. Just cut that out. And then I feed this to my cat friends down there. No, oh, a mangrove snapper got it. Really? Oh, another mangrove snapper got it. There's two of them. Good. 
I'm putting these fillets in a bag and then I'm gonna get to filleting more and Victor and I are gonna finish filleting the rest of the fish in the cooler. Then I will meet you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I'm cooking the almaco and Victor's gonna be cooking up some red grouper. So we got two kitchen cooks going on tonight. You're not gonna get to see how he made his. So if you wanna check his out, I will have his video linked in the description. Now, like I said, when I was filleting the fish, we crushed the red grouper. And actually yesterday I did a red grouper kitchen cook and in the video, I said that it was my first catch and cook in the house, but really, this is gonna be the first catch and cook that you guys see in the new house. So, if you guys didn't know, Victor and I recently bought a new house, and this is our kitchen, so pretty stoked for you guys to see this, and we're gonna have a lot of great catch and cooks going on in this kitchen, so that's pretty exciting. But this is my Almaco Jack. I'm only cooking for five people tonight, so I'm not cooking all of it, but look how good that looks. So, so good. And I'm gonna keep it really simple on my seasoning for the fish. I'm just gonna do some salt and pepper, and then I'm going to make a honey, lemon, garlic, soy sauce sauce that I'm gonna put on it. So I'm not gonna do too much salt, but I'm gonna salt these with a little salt, because soy sauce has a lot of salt in it, so don't wanna do too much salt on them. Pepper. Then we're gonna flip them over. This is a very firm fish, like I was saying earlier, when I was filleting it. It's, you can do a lot of different things with it. Honestly, we don't have a grill at our new house yet, so if I did have a grill, I probably would be grilling this right now. That's how firm of, of a fish it is. It stays together very well. Definitely a good fish for the grill. So I'm gonna set my fish aside and work on the sauce that I'm going to use to put on while I'm cooking. So like I said, I'm doing honey, soy sauce, lemon juice. The thing I want the most of is the honey. So we're gonna do one nice big scoop. Two, three, I just wanna eat this. <laughs> Four. Then we're gonna take our soy sauce. We have half of a lemon. We're gonna use the juice from half the lemon. Now I'm gonna add this minced garlic. It's about three cloves. And then I'm just gonna stir this baby up. Now I have a hot skillet with some olive oil in it and I'm gonna put my fish in. Okay, so this side's been cooking for one minute and now I'm gonna flip them over. Now this side's been cooking for a minute and now it's time to pour on my sauce. Whoa, that looks good. All right, so now this is gonna bubble up and it's gonna get a lot thicker and it's gonna be a nice thick honey glaze on there. Looks pretty good and it smells really good already. Okay, so now my honey glaze has gotten nice and sticky, and now for the final touch, I'm gonna sprinkle on some green onions. Oh yeah. Can't wait to try it. So we got a scoop of our honey garlic fish here. Then this is Victor's grouper, baked in the oven. Put some carrots on there. That juice. Victor made some oven roasted potatoes. And then I did some broccoli and mushrooms. Here we go. Who's the lucky first plate? Mama. Oh my god. You got a big plate there. <laughs> Well, I um, stained, your stained shirt. The, the crap out of my shirt, so you know it had to be good. <laughs> like literally, it looks like I went out in the rain. I don't know what it's from. Something splattered Honey, all over soy my soy sauce, shirt. oil, something. Anyways. Since we did not do a review, 
and we didn't ask Bert's parents or grandma who was over here for dinner, I gotta say one thing. Because when Brooke first started out cooking, it actually uh, ever yeah. since I met Brooke seven, eight years ago, her palate has went from this to like <laughs> this. She used to be the chicken tender girl, but now she's... I wasn't that bad. Not that bad, but you were limited in your options, but Today, when Brooke was cooking, I'm like, are you going off recipe or are you just kind of eyeballing it? She goes, oh, I'm eyeballing it as she's pouring in the soy sauce. And you know what? Her cooking skills have gone way up. The recipes are really good. So congrats, babe. You're doing a good job. Something that I'm always worried about when Victor and I both do catch and cooks on the same day and make two completely dishes is, are they going to be weird together? Like, is someone going to use something where it just is completely different from the other one and not taste good together mixed? And we always try to do like, someone cooks a vegetable, someone cooks like a starch or something like that. And almost always it all goes together really, yeah. really well. I don't know how we do that every time, but- The it, flavors today matched together well. The flavors today were really good together and everything was excellent. And, and the, it came out on time, which is, if you guys don't know me, <laughs> I used to take like four hours to do a catch and cook, but I don't know, it's just like things click together now. I think because he has me as a cook. That's probably it. <laughs> Something I always say when we make these dishes is you have to try it. And you have to remember that you don't have to use the exact same kind of fish that we use when you do these recipes. You can use literally any kind of fish for almost any recipe and mm -hmm. it's going to turn out almost the same. There are different fish do have different textures, but the textures don't really matter that much when it comes to the recipes. So don't be afraid to Try it on something else, try it on snapper, try it on dolphin. Yeah. You know, if you have to go to the store and buy some kind of frozen fish, yeah. try it. You don't have to use the same exact kind of fish that we use. You know, change up your recipes, try new things. Don't be afraid of always using it, the same it's recipes. Like, it's like people think that, people always ask us, okay, give me a good grouper recipe. It's like, yeah. well, which one do you want? Yeah, people always are like, I want a good recipe for this. And it's like, well, you can do any kind of recipe yeah. on anything, really. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to try new things. And, you know, if you don't like it, then don't do it next time. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. And again, huge shout out for Captain Tyler for taking us out fishing. He put us on the fish all day long. And I'm going to have another video coming out. So stay tuned for that one of my grouper catch and cook. But if you guys are interested in his charter, I will have his information linked down in the description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>